Is it recording? Oh, there. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi Erica. I see. <laughs> hey, Dina. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name's Tina from Quantum Healing with Tina, and today we're going to talk to Karen about her BQH sessions. Yes. Yes. Let's do that. Let's do it. So. In your first session, you went back to Sirius and visited your home planet. Tell us about that and, and um, what that felt like. Well, it was extremely intense. Like the arrival was confusing at first because I didn't know where I was. So being in the first session, you know, you're kind of just like, okay, you know. You're, you're, you're still like talking to yourself, you know, you're, you're kind of present in it. And then after that, you kind of get used to it and you remind yourself, thank God you told me to trust everything. So that's when I finally decided to leave. Or you know what I, you know what I realized from listening back to your session was you ended up in a black space in that first session. You were in a complete, it was just dark and black. And then as you sunk into it you started to feel more and you felt you were in the castle and right, right. yeah what was what was that like being in a castle yeah well I've never been in a castle so it was really interesting to be in a castle and then yeah. not know where I was like you know I assumed I was maybe on earth perhaps like visiting a past life right and then you know I saw, I saw the tin man <laughs> <laughs> the night that was there by the window like so there was windows or well, not windows but like more arches along the corridor and light coming in I guess from the outside so when we later learned I felt like you know I went to approach it and there was like a flag thing that we saw too uh the the knight standing there I don't know why like what that was for like what those represented or symbolized, but I, I think the only thing that was just to get my attention to know where I had to go. Right. You know, like it was nothing more than that. Right. Well, we later found out they were like what their souvenirs. Souvenirs. Or souvenirs yeah. of the, of the what do you whatever wherever I was. Yeah. So I mean, going there, but then I remembered it looked familiar. Everything looked familiar to me, and it was because like a couple uh like what's it called a, a guided meditation that I did I was I, I was there and I had like kind of a glimpse of that castle and being with my star parents out there in Sirius it was in Sirius with the meadow in the back exactly as it was with the you know the long corridor and the arches of the of the castle and me being in that specific balcony Right. Where I was drawn to, like, I guess, which is where the Tin Man and the, the flag was saying, like, okay, you got to come here, stand here. So I did that. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much go going. So I, I recognized it because I had experienced it before in a meditation. Right. Was yeah. it as vivid in the meditation as it was in the hypnosis? Um, well, I was pretty deep in it because I it was also an emotional um experience for me just to feel again the you know the reconnection with my parents there but not as intense like I was crying in my meditation but not where to the point where I was physically affected by it right and like physically actually feeling that you felt them yeah. coming you felt them before they were even there because their right. vibration was so high yeah so high. Yes, it was intense. Like I, it was as if like there was like a circumference of energy around them, and they were, you know, that circumference was c touching me wherever I was standing because of how high vibration they were. Like you could just feel that love energy, and it was just coming. And I was like, oh my god, like they're coming! <laughs> <laughs> so excited <laughs> and nervous, and just like, but my body. I think what what made me like. It felt like nerves, but it was because my body started shaking. Like, right. Well, yeah, you were there. I was shaking. Right. 
it gets kind of overwhelming to the nervous system of a human 3D body. To feel love. Yeah, to feel yeah. that kind of love, yeah. That. Yeah, no, it was, it was amazing, like, to feel it. Because I've never, well, physically been that shit, like, shaken, shooken, shook. <laughs> <laughs> shaken? Shaken, yes. Yeah, never right. like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was really beautiful. That was, I really loved that you got to feel that again. Because part of your, um, like we talked about before, part of your feeling as a starseed on Earth, you kind of always feel disconnected or like you're not, you're missing something or, you're, or you don't belong here. You're not supposed to be here and you want to go home and you have those longings to go home. And you got to experience that again and what that really feels like and, and bring that back with you into your current life, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Great to like, you know, you, you come into this dense body as a volunteer, you find out, which is crazy mm -hmm. to a lot of people because everyone's in pain. So it's like, why the hell would I volunteer to do this? Like, feel this, be in pain and hate it. You know, like you just want to check out when you can you know but no one's courageous enough to check out only like the real brave ones get to go out you know don't don't mark me on that that's my mistake <laughs> but you know like everyone is just scared and and in fear and in pain so mm -hmm. like yeah why would you want to volunteer and do that so yeah uh, from that point like I already had that disconnect as a child like not understanding where this love was that I've been searching for or felt was either taken from me but it was a knowing that I knew existed but had no proof of right so I kept looking for it outside of myself of course you know as a child you need the the nurturing up from your parents or whoever the family around you and was not getting it from them no offense they watched the video <laughs> but it wasn't enough for me right it really wasn't enough so but I always knew that there was something there because how could you make that up you can't make you know like it, you feel crazy thinking that or you're you have this expectation of something that's not true or whatever but then that experience like when we came back and had you know felt my parents come in through was like the validation that I needed for like the last 30 x years that I've been searching for Right. So it finally came back to me and that way I was able to fully embody that and take away that craziness that I've been feeling all those years that it didn't exist or that I've been in search for something that was always in me. Right. Right? Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's it that realization that it's always been within you and we're always looking outside of ourselves for for that love that is always within us and <clears throat> having that experience allowed you to finally realize that and bring it home with you yes it's with me all yeah. the time and that's why right. it's like everything's been so great since that session everything or every other session that we've ever done and i mean if you compare the way i sound it because i mean i hear i listen to them well i've been doing my homework so i've been like listening to them and from that session, I was so, remember the lockjaw issues? Yeah. I had lockjaw issues that I wasn't aware of. Well, I mean, I always knew I was a mumbler, but not to that extent where I was like a ventriloquist, right? We always make fun of me <laughs> <laughs> to do that. But no, I saw like when I was able to heal myself, heal, do the healings that I thought were pertinent or that were necessary, like when I did the throat <clears> one. You could hear me talking in diff in the other sessions after that I'm clear, mm -hmm. like I'm opening my mouth when I talk. But it's my voice is clear. I'm not Absolutely. mumbling. I'm not under. I'm not holding myself back. I'm not. I'm just suppressing. Right. Yeah. You're not suppressing yourself. Yeah. And you did, it was so unconscious. You didn't even realize you were doing it, but you know, having it brought to your attention, you were able to heal that and in feeling that reconnection again. And part of that also was that 
you know, a lot of star seeds bring with them into Earth that feeling of abandonment, not knowing where it comes from. Even if they have a loving family and loving um, parents, there's still that feeling of abandonment, and it's because of the the drop in vibration and not being able to feel that super high love frequency, you know, that super high unconditional love that we just don't feel that on earth. There's, there's no match for that vibration here. So a lot of star seeds can feel that sense of abandonment and then start looking outside of themselves for this love that they know exists, but Mm -hmm. can't seem to find anywhere you know and then and then humans are just disappointing to them you know oh or god yeah everybody <laughs> everybody yeah. It's terrible it's yeah. terrible like to be isolated like that or feeling that disconnect and not being able to understand why so yeah i spent a lot of time just uh observing people that was like my favorite thing to do is just to watch humans like a uh-huh. zoo yeah. be able to categorize them like easy. right yeah that was the fun part being right. able to like meet somebody and know exactly where to put them in what box and I think the reason why I long like I did that too was because I was also trying to find myself and try to figure out what box I fit in right I fit in any box it right. felt like I was alone in one box by myself like I you know my sisters all said I was weird the black sheep because I'm the middle child you know I was outside I was always out of it out of out there you know compared to them you know they were very well tamed yeah I was not tamed yeah 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 Mm -hmm. and that I think that's what a lot of us try to do is try to find where we fit in 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 the world in society and we have as humans we have that natural um yearning to want to fit in somewhere Mm-hmm. Um, early on, I realized that I, I really, I kind of fit in everywhere and nowhere at the same time, you know, pretty much like little pieces of myself, but not enough to be like, you know, those quizzes that you do, like, oh, you have like X amount of traits makes you this or that. But then everything happened to be like, well, you're everything. That's what we learned. Right. You're everything. Right. It is everything. So you don't fit into one specific box, which I think is really beautiful. You fit in the everything box. Everything, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So then after we met your parents in the castle, we we traveled to, I don't even remember how we kind of ended up there, but you were in your yard at your childhood home listening to the ground and hearing the connections and the communications under the ground. Can you tell talk about that? Yeah. Uh, that that's completely the not to say the opposite. I think I'm coming back to the nature aspect of myself a little more than I was before. Forget it. Like I wouldn't even consider going out. Like I remember when I first heard about grounding, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like no, <laughs> you know. So yes, but I yeah, like com- coming back as a child and like being on the ground, like literally like feeling the grass in my face and having my ear to the ground I was able to hear the vibrations the conversations that were going on underground like hearing the the roots talking the the trees having our conversations the trees that were from neighbor to neighbor like the roots like under that were you know all connected and everything that was growing under that we couldn't see were all communicating and I was just part of the conversation because I would talk to them telepathically and yeah yeah and it was the only place where I felt safe or understood because right. it was like I didn't even have to physically say or like anything it was just a knowing you know mm-hmm. and I and I do this a lot because that's exactly how I was it was just like you know like when you're listening to to a bedtime story and you're just yeah. you feel safe you know like you're gonna go to bed and whatever I, I and I would sneak out of the house go over to the side of the house and put my ear to the ground and listen in the grass. And so how did that disconnection happen then? Where did that, how did that come in? There's a lot of things. I mean, A, okay, culturally, you know, you're not supposed to do that. They wanted, you know, girls don't get dirty. Um, 
you just don't do that. Like, don't do that, <laughs> right? Don't do that. Right. Or are you lying down on the floor, you know, like on the ground, especially outside, you know, you're going right. to, they instill a lot of fear. Like, you know, the bugs are going to crawl on you. They, you know, you don't want the spider to come get you or the, you know, whatever it is. Right. And um, I don't even know if that's culturally, I, at least that was my family. Like they were just like, you don't, you don't do that. That was pretty much it. You don't do that. You're a girl, you know, already putting me in that box, a, a box. They're putting me in a box and I'm like, no, like it doesn't, <laughs> no, why would, you, why would you say that? I'm getting scared. Like, you know, eventually the voice overtakes and, you know, I want to also then seek that validation from them too, because they are physically in my world and I don't want to displease them by being a right. bad girl. So I obey. And then when I obey, I get what I need. And then, you know, so then you walk away from things that you're, you know, connected to for something that's there every day, whatever that yeah. is. Right. Yeah. Well, that's part of the conditioning and programming we, we have as humans and our parents unconsciously instilling those fears in us without even realizing what they're doing. That's why I've been so conscious with the kids um, not to instill those kinds of fears into them, you know, and to kind of just let them be kids unless they're doing something super dangerous, you know, like... I try not to be like, oh, my God, don't do that or be careful or, you know, all these things. Our parents want to protect us and that's a natural instinct. But I find that it becomes over overly protective and those those fears sink in because up until the age of six, <clears throat> we are in a constant state, a hypnotic state, and we are just absorbing literally everything. And so those things get in so easily and they, and they create lifelong fears. They say up until, you know, our patterns are formed by the time mm -hmm. we're six years old and then we carry them with us throughout our life, not even realizing that that's what's happened, you know, that, that these things were formed in our, the first six years of our life. So, yeah, a lot of that, that fear programming is, you know, it's just an unconscious thing people do and because they want to protect their children, but they don't realize um, they're damaging you know. them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You're making yeah. them walk away from themselves. Right. You let it start early. Yeah. It is what it yeah. is. <laughs> but you're reconnecting again, slowly. Yeah, I know. Like, sometimes we go outside and you're like, you should take off your flip-flops. I was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so after that we went back after visiting that scene we went back to the castle and uh we we talked to your guide zen zen yeah he's zen cool. zen who actually has a super long name that we can't possibly pronounce in English and they probably don't even have names anyway so he just gave us something to call him by um yeah but that came full circle too later yeah tell we'll us about that talk. oh okay we're not gonna talk about that in video too <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right know. well we can talk about that another time so let's let's stick to the point okay so yeah tell we met what about Zen? Zen was a guide that I had first met when I did a guided meditation back in the day. Back in the day. Back in like it's a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Uh, where I was on the search of finding my star family or star, like my, where my star, or actually that's it. Where I come <laughs> from. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Star. So, um, yeah, I went on uh, YouTube and there my kids overtake the YouTube on my iPad. But then there was some random video on the side that was like um, a guided meditation to finding, I guess, your star guide or, you know, meeting your star guide. So I was like, all right, let's see, you know. So I did the meditation. And yes, of course, my ego is with me, you know, <laughs> no problem. Like, and interrupting you know that the relaxation process 
he's like, okay. He's like, what do you think we're going to see? And I was like, I don't know. Let's find out together. Because yeah. I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know. I wasn't drawn to anything. Actually, the only thing that was within my vicinity was probably like Pleiades. That was the only one that I was really more aware of. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know anything much more about that than, than that. So anyway, I go. So we're going up the mountain in, in the meditation. And then they said, when you get to the top, the doors are going to open. And then you're going to see something. So the doors open. And the first thing I see is this tall blue, like navy blue avatar with gold plate, like Egyptian plate around the neck. Kind of like longish neck. He's about seven, eight feet tall. Um long arms you know and i'm like okay so in the meditation they're like why don't you ask your guide what uh you know a question and so i the only thing that came up to mind because i wasn't prepared was like, <laughs> doing all right here you know <laughs> is it am i doing great and they're like yeah you're doing really good telepathically so i'm like okay great and then they asked me to ask him for a gift and so he presented me with this blood ruby and again like i don't have i don't think about rubies if if i'm gonna think of like a a piece of jewelry or something like i always think of the diamond that's why i was surprised that ruby was really so like ruby you know and it was blood red ruby so i'm like all right great ruby you know i don't know <laughs> what that means sure so he's bringing it as you bring it closer to me to offer it to me it's getting more and more transparent as it comes closer and closer to me and then he puts it into my heart I was like, all right, great, see ya, you know, like, I don't know who that is. So um, the first thing I did when I got off there, I went on Google and I literally typed um, blue star being or, or alien, I don't remember, something along the lines. And the first and only ones that showed up in the 10 that they offer on the first page was Sirius. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, yes, I go, I don't know. Like, so I, I clicked on a couple of them just to, you know, they show you characteristics or the beings and they're all like blue and they all sound like me, you know, like person, like personality wise or whatever. So it resonated very much. And plus, again, that, that blue is like my favorite color. Mm-hmm. So that was another indication, like another sign for me that I was in the right direction and you know and and in the first session that I had it we learned that they had planted things in me like for me to remember like memories for me to catch them and you know kind of like wrap like a, a trail of breadcrumbs and I would just go so I knew that I was in the right track of things so anyway yeah so that was one of them that was me like getting led to where I had to go for me to find myself or wherever I came from right and I love I love how that happens and um I think a lot of times as humans we discount those things as just coincidence or you know whatever we pass it off as but they're really anything that resonates with us it there's a reason for it yeah, you know i've learned how to follow those clues those signs instead of like overthinking them i just feel it you know like i've always had that feeling and i'm like i'm not going to keep searching for it but even if i were to search for it they would always keep showing it to me just to say like okay here's another one here's another one you know uh exactly it was well yeah the, those signs it was like when the the, the night that we started talking I kept seeing the license plates with your initials. Yeah. 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 All the way down the road, like, and it was a long road. (laughs) I was like, okay, I get it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, so many signs and synchronicities we've been shown over the years. It's just impossible to remember them all. But I love that, especially when it comes to finding your star family. Like, those are the things you need to pay attention to, things that you feel a resonance with those are the things that are for you you know but so then we met Zen again in your session yes right and we we talked to Zen and he he talked a lot (laughs) and 
he covered a lot of things and answered all of your questions and like everything you ever wanted to know. We talked about you you talked a little bit just now about those memory imprints. Tell us about that and the ceremony that they had for you. Yeah, so when when I decided that I was going to volunteer, it was like a huge ceremony thing. Like they put like um everyone, I guess whoever came for the ceremony in Sirius, I guess that perhaps you know, the beings that I'm close to, uh, they gave me like memories I think that's how we call the memories so that along the way in my human self like if I were to get triggered then it would be like as a way for me to know that I was on the right track I guess maybe perhaps to waking up or at least while also when I was awake to keep following those trails I I know that when I when I was awake they came more often Obviously, you're more aware, right? So, right. But I do remember things like from, you know, the past, like where I would have like deja vus. They, they explain that they do come in deja vus mm-hmm. or, you know, whichever things that you feel like a resonance with but have no idea for. It's just at least, you know, to get you to, to jolt, I guess, to wake up a little bit more. So, yeah, they, right. they, they implanted like different things in me for, for that remembrance. Right. Yeah. Because... On Earth, there's a veil of forgetfulness, and there's always a possibility of not waking up. So, I was in, going there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's what happens to a lot of us. We're, we're awake as children, but that programming and fear sets in and takes over as we're trying to fit in and adapt to life here on Earth and follow the rules and how things are supposed to go. Mm-hmm. until we can't anymore and yeah, then they're so veiled until we unveil completely right and then we have to unlearn everything everything <laughs> well, you you watched my whole unlearning process yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> we'll save that for another video too <laughs> yeah it's been yeah it's been amazing watching it um and it's really my well, like one of my favorite things is watching someone discover who they truly are and embodying that authenticity again. It's really just the most beautiful thing on the earth for somebody to find their truth again and really embrace that and allow themselves to feel that and live that. It's it's really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so Zen also yeah so he you know he talked about um how you were awake as a child so talk a little bit about that and um uh what that was like dealing with being awake as a child and dealing with you know people around you that weren't oh god I think like everybody else, you know, um, oh, it's just foreign, don't understand anyone. And it's just like, you know, I kept pushing their buttons. I don't know, maybe I was the trigger for them, but I, I just didn't understand why. Well, I think that was your role in everybody's life was to be that trigger. Yeah, I triggered. To show them a different way. Right. It's so obvious, but right? It's so <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Which yeah, Zen, I, Zen says all the time. It's so obvious. They're at, at people on Earth are just they're just walking backwards, and it's just so obvious they what they should be doing. And right. your role here is to point them in the right direction and show them a different way. Right. I remember that visual actually of them saying like everybody is just walking in the direction. You see like a crowd of people. You just see the back of their heads, and I'm the one who's turned, the only one who's turned, and I'm. And yeah, I was like, <laughs> no, this way, you know, let's go this way instead. Yeah, it, that's just pretty much been it. I mean, like, I understood why I, I had chosen a Filipino family. They're very much on that path of what success is supposed to be like, you know, that, that route of success. You know, they really stress education and jobs. 
security, you know, your retirement, like, you know, you have a good retirement plan, you're good, you know, like they, they, they really make you like think so far ahead, you know, secure your future when you could just so not present, you know, like take you away from that presence, instilling that fear that if you don't do it, you know, like you're not good enough. And, you know, constantly feeling that judgment, like I'm not good enough. And plus I had a, a sister, an older sister who's excellent at school <laughs> and then me who's like yes you know like I love gym I love gym <laughs> class. I'm gonna do great in gym yeah but you know like doing what I did now like well at my job now she already like I said like before I even got that diploma which is not really a diploma it's not a well it's a diploma but it's not like a, a bachelor's or whatever she was already getting her master's at that point and I was just like, oh, here's my little certificate. <laughs> I did something, you know. Yeah, but my parents, like, not, not to say their, their bar was low for me, but I guess they just were always accepting. They never pushed me, which is great, you know. But I still carry that inside of me, knowing very well that they were kind of like, you know, let's not criticize. Well, they never talked about anything. But, like, let's not put too much pressure on her because we know how she is because then I was very that stubborn type to be like you know what if you don't like it I'm gonna do even worse and do right. this to spite them right like I was that kid so I think that's why they left me alone because then I would have just been a dropout I probably would have I'm like screw this <laughs> right but they also in your session you learned that they knew you were going to be fine like they trusted you yeah, they, that was the other flip side of the coin that, uh, yeah, I learned that they really... They really trusted they you. Just knew, and... I knew what I was doing. I guess I just held that kind of, I don't know what it was, enough for me to, to just go my own path. They knew that I was doing what I needed to do and I was skimming by and I was okay with that. Like I wasn't aiming, I don't know, again, if that was just like a low bar thing. But it was just like, okay, well, whatever. She's she's getting through. And yeah. I trusted everything that I did. I mean, I was very honest with them. With everything that I did. I never lied to them. But they never believed anything that I said. <laughs> well, I think I, that's... I'm going to go drink again. I'm going to go. I've been doing, I you know, I smoked some weed yesterday. And they're nothing. Like, they're just like, oh, she's so funny. You know, like, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> right, but that was also part of the, the persona that you made in being that sarcastic person that people don't know what to believe anymore, so they just don't believe anything. Like, that was part of your personality that you created. Right, and that is very true, <laughs> because even, again, like, when I first, like, badly came out to my mom, she didn't she was obviously not prepared she didn't know if she had to believe me or not it changed the subject like that and it was like done and I was like well that didn't go very well <laughs> you know right right but then again we learned in your session that the fear that you carried in telling your parents and talking to them about coming out was just your own fear it had nothing to do with them because your parents are happy no matter what you do as long as you're happy right well, and so Peter, what Zen said was just like they're just details, right? Of of whatever she's holding on to, like the fear of the details. When as you know, they they could step, take a step back, look at me as you know, unconditionally love me as parents do their child, and that's it. I mean, they saw, and it was nice and refreshing to 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 learn that they were able to watch my evolution, watch the way I had transformed myself without having to say a word, you know. And that felt really good to know because it's just like, well, do you, do you see that I'm actually doing great? Do you see that I'm actually really happy? Like my eyes are actually bright and, and open and I'm, I'm excited to wake up. Like I can't wait to, to get up and start my day. Whereas they knew me as the hermit <laughs> who would hibernate all the time. Like I just was going... I was, yeah, gone. I didn't want to be here. I would strive, like, I would, any chance that I could daydream or sleep, because I like to dream and I would remember my dreams very well, or create, 
in my mind the life I wanted or fantasize about things that I just nothing nothing in this life I wanted so yeah right. every chance I got you know, get out of there and make it create it but then yeah everything that I had created in those times I was actually manifesting which is what it is right now right yeah everything was nice yeah and you didn't even believe that you could have those things you were just daydreaming no. to get out of here you just went yes. to come like, here and I was like <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah and that's how powerful our imagination is and that's how we use it to create Yes, I knew. Like, it was going to benefit me somehow. <laughs> but it did benefit me for the longest time. It was just that when I actually had to be conscious and go, you know, do human things, I was just like, oh, okay. And then any time, like, okay, I get on the bus to go to, to school or to work or whatever it was. And, okay, I have 45 minutes here where I could just think or daydream or create. And I would check out till I had to get out. I was in trance mode. Trance. All the time. Yeah. All the time. I was just coming. I was just going back to the first six years of my life, being in trance. I was like, "Come on, yeah, <laughs> come back, give back to me." It was the only time I felt alive. Right, but now that you've done all the work and unlearned all of what you learned in the first thirty some years of your life, you're able to be a happy, functioning human yeah. and in, in my 3D yeah. without wanting to escape all the time. Oh. No, I don't. Need, I don't need to go to five D. I'm happy in my three D body and this three D life, right? Because I can, and I feel more expanded that way, so much more expanded. Like I finally like don't need to run or hide, but if I do feel like okay, lower vibration, like I can actually sit with it and not be scared of it because I know it's. It's all good. <laughs> it's a story. Like it's it's all part of the process. Like I don't deny myself of things. And it's okay, like not to be afraid anymore of emotions that I was not allowed to feel and being able to have them and validate myself to have them. Like it's okay. Right. It's okay to be sad or angry. And it's great because then I could bring that with the with my own children now. And teaching them how to embrace their emotions and not be afraid to feel them, mm -hmm. normalizing them, giving them, you know, the ability to to recognize them and to to not, you know, you know, well, we're working on it, <laughs> like you know, not 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 be ashamed of it, like it's okay, right. like because you know. we were taught as children to only embrace the good emotions right the happiness and the joy and so then you want to hide the things I mean for the longest time I would cry in dark spaces because that's all I felt was worth my sadness right. to not show it because if it if no one could see it then it doesn't exist right you know yeah I learned how to cry silently yeah and in the closet silently in the closet in like the, closet. the actual closet yeah like literal closet in dark spaces I couldn't find myself like good enough to to allow it to come out anywhere and I would be very good at holding it until I could find a closet <laughs> right. <laughs> right 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 mm -hmm. and you had to unlearn that and learn how to embrace everything all of our emotions we came here to be human and to experience I did that yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I felt myself ramping. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I did that. Sorry. Whoever's okay. watching. We'll just ignore that. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Candle okay? Huh? Oh. Yeah, no. Yeah. There's no other candle. It's okay. <laughs> anyway. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, we're talking about... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we came here to be human and to, and to feel all of the range of human emotions um, in, and not just the good ones, but the so-called um, lower vibrational emotions as well. Because what we tend to do is hide from them, hide from ourselves, and then suppress them, push them all down. And what happens is they get stuck in our body, right? Yeah. And they 
they cause illness and disease and they keep us stuck mm. when we don't feel them they're meant to be felt their energy in motion and right. um they're meant to be felt and let go but yeah we get we get in those patterns where we we don't know how to feel our emotions and they end right. up getting right. stuck in yeah. our body we don't feel safe enough to express it right we don't feel safe yeah and we don't we don't feel like anyone really cares either to listen you know unless you have someone really there for you who understands it's hard it's hard to um to express mm -hmm. well so I'm it's getting into the the motion of like expressing anger I think yeah the funniest i was like i am pissed you know like i'm like <laughs> <laughs> You're like are you <laughs> right Right. Which is funny because you used to be such an angry person in your angst-ridden teen days, right? Yeah, I was. I was really all about the justice. Yeah. I don't even, I, I vaguely remember myself that way. I just remember the feeling like, you know, that angry t red tomato emoji, like that's just like, <laughs> like Dustin, like, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, like that, like, yeah. yeah. I just was upset, like any injustice would upset me, like extremely upset me. Right. Right. You took it, you took it all personally. and Yeah, I was so susceptible to everything. It's just like, <laughs> what do you mean? You know, like, what is that supposed to mean? But right. I thought we were supposed to react that way too. You know, that that's what was around, you know, the dram dramatic people. I was like, oh, okay, so I guess I got to act like that too. I was like, what's that supposed to mean? You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, right. Yeah, and so you completely lost that anger and and started well, I went the other direction where everything right. became super nonchalant because I had this newfound like, an, uh, like my perhaps like maybe a pre awakening of being conscious of myself because like one of the friends that I had who had really changed me like first person ever change or change like put me like mirrored me saying you know your bad moods really affect everybody around you and I was like oh man that doesn't yeah. sound good that sucks that yeah. sounds very toxic you know like yeah so I had to do I did like exercises where um you know they say you gotta smile for like 10-15 minutes and it'll change your mood I would be on the bus and I'm like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just, just trying everything because I was so miserable, you know. Like I was just like, I can't do this to people, and I really loved and respected her so much that I just didn't, I couldn't imagine myself being like that to someone who I cared about. Right. And I couldn't really imagine how it was really affecting people who were too scared to tell me. She was, right. she didn't care. She was like, Yeah, you suck, you know. Like it sucks <laughs> being around you when you're like that. And I was like, Oh my god. Right. Like, that just. It hurts like I can't believe it. <laughs> no, it was really like thank you. Like the first time I was actually so grateful that someone put me in my place and wasn't scared I think to do it. Yeah, and I think that's something we um subconsciously crave sometimes when we don't get it. See me. Yeah, right. see me. When our parents yeah. aren't making those like you said, like your parents would just kind of let you do whatever you wanted. But Un unconsciously subconsciously we crave rules and structure and order from mm -hmm. our parents yeah well, because they, they did it to my sisters and then here I am I'm like you know getting drunk all the time I was you know doing drugs and I was like I'm a cutter I'm a cutter like nothing there was like, <laughs> see shit, you know like, pay attention to me no look at me I'm gonna hang myself like it was just anything like look at me look at me please right. Yeah. And then everyone thought it was so cool that my parents were like, oh, you get to do anything and everything you want. And I was like, yeah, you're right. That is, I am pretty lucky, you know, that I have parents that whatever. But then, you know, in the back of my mind, I was like, then why do they care about my sister so much? You know, they won't let my little sister do anything. And they were very strict with Carly, too. Like, what, what's it about me? Like, why am I, what, why? Again. Uh -huh. Like, what, what did I do or what did I not do that wasn't enough for them to, to feel, you know, 
I guess that was also in they weren't they weren't loving me in my own love language either, you know. Right. Which is it what was, we were later too. Yeah, like, it was they really did love me in their own way. Yes. They absolutely your parents adore you and that's the thing. We have all these unspoken expectations of how people are supposed to love us, right? Like you expected them to love you in a certain way. And when they didn't love you in that way, you held resentment against them. But then you learned, you know, we grow up and we learn that our parents are people too. And they, they love you. Of course they love you. They just didn't right. love you in the way you wanted them to love you. Right. And, and, I, you and you found true. out in your session that was because they trusted you the most. To make your own, to make your own decisions and to live yeah. your own life. And that is why they treated you differently because they trusted you the most. Yeah. So, That's pretty yeah, awesome. that was pretty awesome. I am awesome. I'm the best. Yeah, <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> um, so we also talked about, um, Zen talked about the pyramids. Do you remember that part of your session? Oh, it's very difficult to just a lot of information. I remember there's he was saying that the you know there's a lot of sacred sites right around the world. Some of them are are still physically there, but the rest of them have become like have raised their vibration mm -hmm. so that we cannot see them, so that right. we cannot destroy them because they hold a lot of um, information in there, right? They're like gatherers of like wisdom or whatever energy it is. yes energy. yes yeah. and Gaia holds a lot of the energy in there or you know and that's why she's kind of like purging herself because she doesn't want anyone to like touch it or you know it's right. so sacred it's just like nah -uh, you're not gonna touch any of this you know you, right yeah yeah, that's part of what's going on with the Amazon fires and that um, that whole thing is because the forest itself and the stuff that's hidden within uh, the rainforest hold it's holding sacred knowledge within it, right. within the trees themselves, within, you right. know, the pyramids within the forest that are still hidden in there. All of it's just holding all of this sacred knowledge and information that Gaia doesn't want the dark forces to get a hold of. So she, in turn, is purging that right. through the fires. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought that was really interesting. How, like, I never, I really didn't expect him to say like they are really just storage containers for energy, like the pyramids themselves. They they are storing all of that energy. And um, just like how trees, like, will take on the energy of something around it, like an animal, like a buffalo, you could see in the shape of a tree trunk or whatever it is, a duck or, you know, whatever, um, it will take on that energy. And then when that tree dies, that the energy will move again into something else. And that's kind of how the pyramids work is that energy just, it never dies. It'll, it just gets transferred over to the next thing. Like you talked about the, the rock or the pebble. Do you remember that? That? From, that came from the mountain. Like it, wherever it is supposed to land is where it's supposed to land. We're not supposed to understand why it just is what it is because that's just nature. That's just the law of how it's supposed to be. Right. You know, we and always the, over have to over guess or understand things, but there's no really understanding of it. It just is what it is. Right. right. But the rock understands that that's part of, you know, the process, the process, and it's where it's supposed to be. And I think that's a good lesson for us in understanding that, you know, whatever is happening is part of our own process. You know, we're always where we're supposed to be. Right. I think when we get away from ourselves, we're just like, you know, the little pebble, but we really are coming from the mountain, you know, the one great source. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good analogy, too. Um, we also talked about, like, the energy exchange between us, which I thought was really interesting, because when you come, we seem to do this, like, hot and cold thing for a while, <laughs> which is, like really crazy because like you'll be cold one minute and then I'll be like dying and sweating to death <laughs> yeah, you look like you jogged 
<laughs> yeah. And it happens like that. Like, literally, I'll just all of a sudden, like, heat up from the inside out and be sweating to death. Right. And Whereas I'm, like, in rigor mortis. I was like, what <laughs> 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 right and then explain that we were just like um having like an energy each other out. yeah balancing each other out and having this energy exchange which i still didn't really understand after that but then we addressed that again later in another in the next session we had mm-hmm. and what did he say um he was saying something like I'll compensate for you or vice versa. Like, right, but it also, for example, yeah, like we're both equally fatigued. We're both equally to, fatigued. <laughs> as opposed to one being super tired and one being energetic, it comes to the middle and we just are equally tired, you know, like, right. whatever it is. equally tired or equally hot. Yeah, we're just like feeding each other just a, a way to find equilibrium amongst each other with that energy right too. and also that that tiredness and fatigue that we're feeling is because we're transmuting for the collective mm-hmm. it's part of purging that energy that 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 heavy fatigue that we feel and being that that, that having that empathic nature and um you know, feeling everything from the collective and then having to be the anchor and, and transmute that energy. Right. Yeah. Um, we also recognized in your session where that army of, that you had an army of entities. Mm-hmm. You want to explain that, how that happened? Well, I mean, I, I remember the day that it happened. I didn't know what it was. I had like I was in my room and I it was late. And it I was this being, the sleep paralysis, right? Yeah, I was under the covers and I was staring at the wall at my scary spice poster and yeah, I couldn't. And then something like like a tingling sensation came over me, kind of like the same tingling sensation that I get when spirit comes and like when I'm in a writing frenzy and I get in zone. That Mm -hmm. same thing, except this was, as the tingles were coming through my body, I was being paralyzed. Mm -hmm. My body just stopped moving, but my eyes were like, I was like in blanket like this, and I was just like, what, (laughs) you know, going on? Yeah, so of course, you know, that fear sets in because you're, you know, on a deep level, I knew what was happening to me, you know, but in because I grew up Catholic, I was just like, oh my God, I'm getting possessed. Like, I'm getting possessed. Right. So, you know, that fear sets in like, oh God, they're, you know, I'm going to have to get exercised or, you know, whatever it is that the, all those fear things come in. So, of course, that would be a great opportunity to attach because I'm so vulnerable now at that point. At that, to the point where I, you know, all the fears are starting to come in. So, you know, let all the doors open up and let's latch on. But yeah, which we later learned was an army of entities that were coming in and latching on to dim my light. I was about 16 at the time. And yeah, I think in the session I was like, Zen was explaining that was because I had already done too much light work at the point, at that point, or planting seeds with a right. lot of people. So it was just like I had done way too much. So they didn't want me to expand. And after that point, like my vibration was really low. I, you know, on top of like the pressure of school and me not feeling like I'm doing, I'm I'm not a good student or, you know, I'm going to make my parents like not proud of what I'm. My you already are. don't feel good about yeah, yourself. Especially like a teenager, you know, right. not feeling great. But that really just top the like just put the cloak on like forget it let's call it a day like she's not gonna wake up they didn't want me to wake up at that point on or have any hope of life and yeah right. that's when I started to deteriorate like I that's when I started to sleep more and escape and become that rebellious teen whatever and, yeah and you just kind of checked out of life and didn't want anything to do with it you know Mm-mm. Yeah, and that lasted for a while. Yeah, 16 till recently. 
thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because you removed those entities yourself. Right. You did. I decided, I was like, I think I need to do it. Because, like, I mean, like, I remember, like, feeling a resistance or whatever on my throat. And just, like, even me, like, even the heart space. Like, I would just, like, use my hand and kind of, like, go through the body, I guess, like, how they would do in Reiki. But I would just feel it, like, uh, intuitively. And I, you could, you know when there's something there. Well, I don't know if people do know that. But, I mean, like, I felt it. Like, I felt like there was physically something there. So, you know, like, I would feel it and, you know, ask, okay, hey, you want to go now? Like, you don't need to be there. I appreciate you being here. You know, I went through the whole process, had a conversation with them and allowed them to, you know, to, to give them the opportunity to go back to light. The biggest one that was on me was actually the throat, which makes sense because I was never able to express my truth, be authentic or... You know, it, they. I think that one was a huge one for me to remove. It was and really have them, to remove. Yeah, and have the, the. I think that was also part of the mumbling and the locked jaw was that entity. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just fear of saying something, you know, and of feeling rejected for whatever was to come out of my mouth. I. What, like was I good enough to say it or you know or it would come out a little too aggressive and then that wouldn't be that wouldn't be good either because you know I didn't want to hurt anyone else's ego either mm-hmm. so I would hold in my my truth to protect others therefore to protect me from having to deal with the consequence of you know it was just a bad back and forth thing protect them to protect me to mm-hmm. protect them and so, right yeah but yeah, that was a big one to remove. It was the one, the last one, and it was, it really resisted because it was like a, like an octopus with tentacles that was attached, like around, literally around my vocal cords, like the box. And it was like really going around and grabbing, like as if it was on a, on a, on a telephone pole and yeah. turn around. Like I had to pull it out and feel like the arms let go. But it was, it, it kept coming back and I had to pull. And I remember in the last pull, because it went stronger, I physically felt like I was being strangled. And I was in a fork in that conscious part, like in that, where <sighs> I was getting scared because I'm like, okay, well, I could te- I technically die right now. While my kids are in bed with me, while I, you know, like, why the hell would I decide to do this while the children are in bed with me, right? I was just so over it. You know, like, I, I, need to, I need to be able to be, to speak or whatever. But I didn't think it was going to be that violent. <laughs> I wasn't going to be that violent. Because when, once I was in it, like, I, that's when I realized what I had to deal with. It was an octopus. That's what it felt like. And we, but you said it actually looked like a demogorgon, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so pulling that out, yeah, like, I, again, I was in that fork where it's just like, am I going to give in to the fear and allow it to pull me again? And 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 allow that fear to take over? Because, yes, I, I, I couldn't breathe. I really I could not breathe. That I remember my eyes turning to the right because Julia was right next to me. And I was like, I can't, no. They're like, it was really, I, I wish someone could see that, like that, just that image. And then I was like, oh no. And then I just felt like that light come. And I was like, uh-uh, go, you're leaving. <laughs> like, and, and it was easier to pull because I, I had decided, I was like, no, no, no fear. Like you've done, you've, you've done your part. Like I'm stronger than you. You're, it's time to go home now. Right. And I was able to pull and I felt it unlatch and I was able to breathe. Like it was really like a, you know, after you've been in water for so long and you get that first breath when you jump out, it was that yeah. breath. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And then, yeah. Like, oh my God. And, then, and then I was like, oh my God, are you going to die? <laughs> they found me in the morning dead. <laughs> Stop. No, you yeah. did. That was, that was great. And I think a lot of, and a lot of that fear comes from the religious 
programming that we grow up with as Catholics. Right, and I pretty much did my exorcism. You did your own exorcism. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so we talked to Zen about that, about Zen helped you remove some of that religious programming and that fear. He worked on removing that from your body. Mm-hmm. Also, the, the lack paradigms and programming, um, removing some of the doubt that mm-hmm. you have in your, in your own self and your power and instilling more confidence. Explain how you felt. Um, I feel that's a progression, that- too. I'm not that I'm like, I'm so confident, (laughs) not, but so much more. You are. I am stepping into myself more. And, but yeah, I think it's just like, it wasn't like, okay, the session's done. I'm, I'm healed. And then tomorrow I'm like, yes, I'm going to work in high heels. Like, no, I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's, it's just like, it, it, I find it's been like a progressive thing where I'm just like embodying it slowly as I drink more water. (laughs) <laughs> and, and integrating those energies or those healings within myself to to come into myself more and embodying that whoever I am the powerful being but no I feel it a lot more like I'm not like today at the at the store I was I was killing it <laughs> <laughs> getting those good deals <laughs> right I was killing it I was just like no I'm gonna get what I want because I'm gonna put it out there and I'm gonna get what I want And I did. Well, I have to say, from my perspective, this session was when? The first session? The The end of August? July. July, August, September. So it's been like three months, three and a half months since then. And I I find you're like almost a completely different person. Like, I know it feels like a progression for you, but from where you were then to where you are now, right. so much healing has occurred. Right. So much. Well, even the healing from even the surrogate sessions, I feel like I get something from that, too. Absolutely. You know, like, just tapping into that and getting those healings. Like, I had a lot of body scans. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, do me, too. Okay. You know, let's get a nice bath yeah but yeah it just I feel so much lighter and not at all bothered not to the extent again like of where you know I, I, I stay in it and I overanalyze you know how my process was I would just get in there and, and fight but then now I finally developed that relationship after the healing with the ego which we will talk in another video. <laughs> That's a whole other video on its own. It was just for me to, to finally get to the ego and have a relationship instead of saying, you know, we got to get rid of your ego or put your ego to sleep or go put on vacation, permanent vacation. No, now we actually work together all the time. And it's great because now we can actually, um, yeah, we have a great companionship and it's like, well, I, yeah, board, I mean, there's no resistance. Like sometimes I'll feel the anxiety, but it goes down real quick. You know, it's it's really like it's okay. You know, like I I hear you, mm-hmm. and just like and it trusts me. You know, like we've developed that trust within each other, where I know he's not going to sabotage me, and I'm not going to abandon it. You know, yeah. like, just like yeah. we're we're together. Like you're with yeah. me, and we're gonna love the body too. You know, the body's part of us. So there's three of us here. And we're going to make the best of this. Yeah. Be together, you know? And they're like, yeah, yeah let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's so amazing. That's where we're going as, um, that's where humanity is headed towards, like, that full integration of body, mind, and ego. And um, yeah. I want just- people to, this is the thing, you know, I need people to feel that it's possible. I mean, if people knew who I was before and saw that, miserable girl that just wanted to die like it was and now I'm like yes I get to go to work tomorrow (laughs) and you know like and I have no problem like nothing bothers me even like you know the drama that's going on around me like I don't attract that anymore in my life but I mean I see it happening but I have compassion for what's happening and I can only hold space for whatever's happening around me but I know that it's not gonna affect me like I just 
don't allow it. I set that boundary. The boundaries are really the big thing too. Having those and just also learning to say no point. Yeah. Yeah, that's become fun too because now it's just like no and it's great. <laughs> like I don't feel bad anymore. Right. No, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. You know. Part of to give a reason. Right. And part of that is like uh, the recovering which is a whole nother video about recovering from codependency <laughs> right. and our relationships. Um, yeah, because we spend so much time suppressing our own truth in favor of other people. And then, um, yeah, it's that suppression of our own truth and the people pleasing that we can't even. Disease to please. Everyone yeah. is sick. Yeah. It's an epidemic. It is an epidemic. And being nice all the time, you know, it's... I am pretty nice all the time, though. Yeah. But not in a bad way. Not in a... No, not in a way that I'm doing it to for people to like me. It's just because I'm happy. Right. Right. Is Which is completely different energy, yeah. You know, there's a difference between being nice to um, appease everybody... Oh, and yeah, those categories of people, yeah, we know those ones. It's just the ones that do it because they want everybody to like them because God forbid anyone, how could you not like that person? You know, they're, they're so nice, but you know, yeah. that they're, but, but they're the first ones that gossip, you know, like, listen, they're like, well, you tell me something, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We send love to them. We send love. It's so bad. Um, what else happened in your session? Anything that you can remember? Um, God, there was just so much that they were talking about. This is just session one we're talking about, right? Yeah, just session session one. I think we pretty much like went on a complete tangent. Yeah, we went on some tangents. That's okay, though. I think... I like tangents. Yeah. They're all relative. I mean, it's just... just they are relative. The roots of the roots of the roots. Well, we're over an hour already, so okay. maybe we can wrap it up for today and do another video. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for listening to us talk, everybody. Um, we'll see you next time. You can find me at Quantum Healing with Tina, and you can find Karen where? uh instagram k bakirin uh are we gonna post that below are you gonna guys like and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> please like and subscribe to our channel <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll do that we'll leave our information we'll down. all our information yeah all right thanks for listening sending you lots and lots of loves and blessings and healing vibes <laughs> peace out <laughs> You I don't know how to stop this. Stop it. There we go.